I am so desperate for this season to be over. I've genuinely never been more desperate to bid farewell to a season in my entire life. This season just needs to be launched into the ash heap of history. It's just been appalling. It's so trying. It's just so painful. So many of these players are so below par. So many of these players do not deserve to wear the blue shirt. You know when you hear fans singing, you're not fit to wear the shirt. Sometimes it feels slightly harsh, doesn't it? I swear you could sing that to half a dozen of these players. And some are quite simply just not good enough. Like, look at the issues that we have in goal. We have spent so much money on goalkeepers, and yet this is what we are served up. This is a situation that we are with. This is a situation that we have to face. We have lost Courtois, who has won European Cups, possibly wins another one. He's worth definitely one of the best keepers in the world, and we've replaced him with these two clowns, catastrophes. I just can't wait for it to end. I, 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 honestly, you might empathise with this, right? Football people get this. I think that we're programmed to believe that the year doesn't run January to December. Like, you know when everyone's celebrating New Year's Eve? Yeah, we do it and whatever. But our years aren't like that. Our year runs, it starts in August and it ends in May. That is the year. That is the way that I am programmed to be. So gen generally, at this time, I'm hopefully a bit optimistic, you know, finals and whatever. There's a moment for glory, but I'm also a little bit gutted because... The football season is coming to an end. I'm usually a little bit heartbroken. You know, I start storing the match of the days up and start talking to people. You know, when I was going to football a lot, you see the same faces a lot of the time. You've got football friends. You know, you make friends at football that you see outside of football, but then you've got the geezer who sits three seats over there and you say hello every week. But you don't know. Don't know his name. You know his favourite coat. You know that he doesn't like Cucurella. You know certain things about him. You know that he always goes down on the 41st minute to get himself a pint. You ain't got a clue what his name is. Usually, you're coming to this stage of the season, you think, I'm not going to see them, and you get a little bit morose, a little bit sad. Football's coming to an end. This is sad times. But I'm buzzing for the football season to end. I am absolutely doing cartwheels. I'm doing the Fabrizio Ravinelli celebration around my front room at the prospect of Chelsea not playing games of football. Because make no mistake about it, that that we've just seen at Stamford Bridge is as good as it's going to get from now to the end of the season. That is the last point that Chelsea will gain this season. If you think, pack up now, I'll see you in August. Like, this has been atrocious. We are in 11th spot. We're seven points behind Brentford. I don't even want that to sound sneery to Brentford. I'm full of admiration for what they're doing there. I think Ivan Tony is a sensation. I'd have him at Chelsea today. Ivan Tony would immediately become one of the better players at Chelsea. He'd certainly become the best, the best forward at Chelsea. Oh, dear. It's so, so painful it's so depressing and that forest team look they, they've got a good point and they played well today but they've lost 18 games this season they've lost 18 games this season not one of them against Chelsea they've taken two points off us everyone beats forest 18 times they have suffered defeat and yet not once against us 18 times and they've then come to Stamford Bridge and basically do what they can't do They've basically managed to achieve the impossible. All season, they have managed to win one game away from home. That's all they've got in them. One away win all season. Their entire survival bid is built on the ability to secure points at home, making their home form impregnable, making it a bit of a fortress up there. That's what they've tried to do. And that is why they will probably survive. And yet they've taken a point off us. And the weirdest thing, and this is the saddest thing about the entire day. At the end of the game, if you looked at any Forest fan, you looked at any Forest uh, player, they were quite happy with a point. But you could see there was an, an edge in their celebration. And I genuinely think they were thinking, should we be happy with this? Or should we be ruining the fact that we didn't take three? Is it a good point at Stamford Bridge? Or realistically, is it two points dropped? Because I genuinely believe that it was two points dropped. That Brennan Johnson moment when he didn't get played in towards the end there, in injury time, wasn't it? Chance at the end of the first half as well. I think that Forrest could genuinely be looking at it, thinking, should they have actually secured their second away win of the season? And ultimately, he's taken a point at Stamford Bridge, a bit of a missed opportunity. It's a sickener. 
It really is a sickener. And if you just look at the state of Chelsea when we went a goal down, I think the first goal that Forrest scored, a fair play to that Awen E. He's had a fantastic week, hasn't he? It was like four goals in the space of a week. Brilliant, brilliant form from him. And my good mate, Adi Oladipo, is a fellow Nigerian, so I do hear a lot about this uh, this chap. Amazing rise to prominence and uh, finding form just at the right time. But if you examine that first goal that he scored today, it's everything wrong with Chelsea. Kovacic leisurely, cheaply giving a ball away. Nobody, nobody um, trying to win the second ball. Chips in and Edouard Mendy makes a pig's ear of it. Edouard Mendy just all over the place. And I really do not know where we are going to go from here. Like, if you think about Chelsea's squad at the moment, we have so many problems. So many problems. Not just all the stuff that Graham Potter was talking about. Look, I think Graham Potter is a complete wally. But some of the stuff he was saying about the numbers, they're just fact. It's not his opinion. They're just fact. Players had nowhere to sit in the changing room. Players were getting changed in the hallways. He had to have two first-team games going on simultaneously at training. It's ridiculous. So he was doing an 11 versus 11 and a 9v9 concurrently. How can one manager oversee that? It's ridiculous. It's shambolic. So a lot of that stuff is true and needs to be held into, held, taken into account. But if you look at our squad, there is so many problems within it. There is a lot of dead wood. I genuinely believe that it's half a dozen players that aren't good enough to be there. Half a dozen footballers at Chelsea, playing for Chelsea, aren't good enough to play for Chelsea. That's a fact. Then, just pick it apart. Pick any position. Our goalkeeping situation is truly laughable. Like, truly laughable. And I think everybody wants to talk about a striker at Chelsea. Everybody wants to focus on, oh, you know, we need a striker. Is Lukaku coming back? If it's Pochettino, how's he going to work with Lukaku? Forget that. Striker is important. And I love the idea of signing Osherman. But that isn't the most important problem. If we do not solve our goalkeeping crisis, we are knackered. If we do not find a solution to this embarrassment that we have in goal, we are finished before we've even started. The season is over next year before it's even started. If we embark on the new season and Edward Mendy or Kepa Riza Balaga is our number one, the season is over before it's begun. They are both truly appalling. And that's a fact. That is a fact. Like... Let's say, appalling could be harsh, right? But Ariza Balaga and Edouard Mendy are and always were bang average goalkeepers. Bang average. That is at best. And, you know, we paid an average amount for Edouard Mendy, but we paid an absolute fortune for Kepper Ariza Balaga, but neither are good enough. And I think that this needs to become the priority position. I really do. I think that we need to focus, and I don't mind if it's out or no, no, I don't really care. But for the rest of the season, we need to do something about this goalkeeping crisis that we've got. Like, we've got the American lad, haven't we? Sl- sl- is it, what is it? Slanina? I hope I haven't uh, ruined that. But I think it's Gabriel Sl- Slanina. Throw him in. Just throw him in. Because he might be good enough, and we know that the other two are not. So give this American kid a chance. Because we know for a fact that the other two are not good enough. So we may as well take a punt and find out if Slanina can be the goalkeeper that we need him to be. Because this is now just catastrophic levels. And that's not the only issue, by the way. Look at any position. Defence. Let's just pick one at random. I'll do one off Tom made at random, right? So goalkeeping crisis. Yeah, we've done it. Centre forward is there. It's obvious. Midfield I could do, but defence will do, right? So Thiago Silva. Brilliant display from him, by the way. North Stand Banners, uh, the We Are The Shed lads did a remarkable job. It's great that Thiago Silva knows how much he means to us. And it was uh, excellent work, generosity, getting the uh, banners designed, paid for, and then out. Fair play to everyone involved. But we love Thiago Silva. He's undoubtedly the best defender at the club, undoubtedly. Because we didn't make it into the Champions League. Because Thiago Silva, this is an awful sentence I'm about to say. This is an upsetting sentence I'm about to say. Because Thiago Silva will never play a Champions League game again, because Thiago Silva will never play in the European Cup again, you know, arguably the best de- defender of his generation, having his career in Europe, in Europe's premier competition, cut short because of idiocy at boardroom level of Chelsea. He should be playing the Champions League next year. But because Chelsea aren't in it, and he therefore won't be in it, I think he's thinking about cutting his Premier League life short. And he's flirting with the idea of going back to Brazil. And naturally, Chelsea correctly will not stand in his way. So, 
we potentially lose our best centre half. It's a mess. It's a complete mess. We ain't got a goalkeeper. We ain't got a striker. Joao Felix is appalling. Support in, in one moment with Ralph, Joao Felix, you can see immediately why he's worth hundreds of millions of pounds in one second, and then why he's on loan at Chelsea, doing sod all really, in the other in the same moment. Does a beautiful dummy, gives the ball away. Beautiful, beautiful uh, control, beats a man, loses it. It's they, it's just not there. It's just not good enough. So our best defenders leaving. We haven't got a goalkeeper. We haven't got a striker. And the midfield, Kovacic, I think, could leave. N'Golo Kante's injury record is troubling. I really, I really don't know. I'm mean, trying to think of some positives. It's been so negative, hasn't it? Uh, Chalaba was brilliant. Probably man of the match, even though Raheem Sterling scored two goals. I think Chalaba was f- just sensational. I really do. And I really like him as well. It's nice to see him playing so well. Raheem Sterling scoring goals. I thought that second goal was a peach as well. Like, you know, very... Uh, Seen him do that at Main Road far too often. So it's nice to see him doing it at Chelsea. But overall, I just think we're a mess. I, re- I really do think that we are a mess. And the sooner that this season ends, the better. On that positive note, thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do me the honour. I would love to welcome you into this community. Please consider clicking subscribe. I'm going to the boxing tonight. I'm going to watch KSI have a fight at Wembley. I wonder if there's any way that we could uh, put half a dozen players from Chelsea in the ring with him instead. Shambles. Oh, you have a wonderful night, everyone. See you in a bit.